everybody. Welcome to Marquette Warrior Basketball on WMUR. Tonight, we're at Madison Square Garden, where the Marquette Warriors coming in with a record of 6-10. and We'll play the Fordham Rams from the MAC Conference. The Rams at 10-9. and Marquette is on, right now, a slide that has carried them through a 1-6 January. Tonight, Joe Metz, alongside myself, is Jim Coleman. And Jim, what has gone wrong with the Warriors? Well, Joe, like you said, they've dropped seven of their last eight games. They only won one game in January, and they're going to hope to start off February on the right foot. But I think uh, the problem is they've had trouble on the road. And um, another road game here in the Mad Madison Square Guard. But Fordham is a team that the Warriors can beat. And uh, we're going to see what happens today, Joe. Yeah, Jim, and you, and you say they can beat, but there's a lot of teams the Warriors can beat at home, but they have a lot of problems on the road. This road losing streak has gotten out of hand, Jim. Um, right now, the Warriors have not won on the road all year. Dating back to last year, we have six, 14 consecutive road losses. Is this the place to snap that? I think it's got to be either here or at Valparaiso, as we see Pop Sims being introduced. Uh, Mark Anglevar, it looks like he's going to get the start tonight, Joe. Yeah, let's re let's go down the starting lineups first for the Marquette Warriors. Pat Foley averaging 11.9 will start at one forward. Beside him, Tony Smith, the Warriors' leading scorer at 12.9 a game. At center, Trevor Powell. Powell, the freshman from Milwaukee, 8.4 points per game. In the backcourt, Pop Sims. Michael has had his problems, 10.3 a game, but he's only shooting 38%. And then we have... Mark Anglovar getting the start for Marquette. Anglovar averaging six a game, but he's a deadly three-point shooter connecting on about 41% of his three-point attempts. Now for Fordham, they're going to go with Joe Paterno. Paterno has been lighting up the Mac. He was Mac Player of the Week last week. Matter of fact, he had a 15 out of 16 effort this past week. Well, actually, it was 14 out of 15 in an 81 to 65 win over Army for the Rams. Uh, Tom Parada will start at the other forward. Parada averaging 14.5 a game. Danny O'Sullivan in the middle, 8.4 a game. And the backcourt, great Pedro and Mark Taylor. Pedro averaging 10 a game. Mark Taylor, 4.3 a game. And Fordham comes into this game with a record of 10 and 9. And in the MAC, as we said before, they are 4 and 3. And Jim, look at this sparse gathering. We were at the pregame reception for the Warriors. A nice atmosphere there, Jim. Well, the Warrior faithful are right down in this section, about two sections behind us. Actually, we being the press, we have the worst seat here in the Madison Square Garden, Joe. But uh, Yes, and, and wait till little Ed Metz files into the arena, and he has better seats than us. Boy, I can't wait to see the look on his face, Jim. Uh, Joe, uh, Trevor Powell, I, as we've noted all year, is going to be jumping center in that Knicks logo. <laughs> I've been waiting for this all year, yeah. folks. It's not Tony Speed Reader, but it is Trevor Powell. He is set to jump against Danny O'Sullivan. The tip, it is won by Fordham. And the Rams control. Here's Joe Paterno, right side. Paterno got into it last year against Tom Copa, though the Warriors shut him down. Outside for Fordham is Mark Taylor. Taylor finds a cutting Joe Paterno. Down low, Danny O'Sullivan banks it in. He is fouled by Tony Smith right off the opening tip, Jim. Well... The question is, Marquette has to keep close with Fordham during the first half, and then they can't go into the second half laps. If they get blown out early, it's going to be the same thing as what happened against Iona. So the Warriors pick up their first team foul. Danny O'Sullivan will go to the free throw line. O'Sullivan is a 6'10 sophomore from Bayonne, New Jersey. He missed the free throw, and the rebound goes to the Warriors and Tony Smith, and Marquette now starts up court with a chance to tie just underway from the guard, 19.34 to go. We're here for a doubleheader tonight. Second game, Miami Marist. Here's Pat Foley outside. Swing it right side for Tony Smith. Here's Anglevar. Anglevar, get it over to Michael Sims in the corner for Pat Foley. Foley, bounce pass to Tony Smith. Top of the key, right side Anglevar. Here's Michael Sims. Get it outside, Pat Foley. Foley, down low for Trevor Powell. His turnaround is no good. And Joe Paterno rips down the rebound for the Rams. Jim. Again, Trevor Powell playing in the land of the Giants, Joe. And it's going to be tough for him to get off a shot like that down low. 19.04 to go in the first half. Fordham out to that 2 nothing lead. Here's Tom Parada. Parada holds high, left side for O'Sullivan. Way outside, he finds the cutting. Greg Pedro, who banks it in. First two for Pedro, and now the Rams out to a 4 nothing lead. And Fordham is showing press, Jim. 
Well, DePaul successfully pressed against the Warriors there. He had a lot of turnovers, so maybe Fordham was watching some of those highlights on WGN, Joe. <laughs> they must be. The Warriors trail once again early, 4-0, 18-34 to go. Jim, we've seen it on the road so many times. Here's Mark Anglovar, top of the key for Michael Sims. Bounce pass right side, Anglovar. 23 on the shot clock. Now here's a steal. Knocked out of bounds by Tom Parada. Warriors will get the ball back with 20 seconds to go. But we've seen it so many times on the road, where especially game at Minnesota that I recall, where the Warriors just get off to that slow start on the road. And then, as you say, they make that feeble attempt at a comeback. Yeah, and, and Fordham really looks pumped up, it seems like. They're playing a 1-3-1 uh, defense, and, 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 they, and they, they have their hands up, Joe. And now there's six seconds on the shot clock. Pack Foley way out in three-point range, guarded by Paterno with three seconds on the clock. Sims finally realizes it, pulls up for a three-pointer, and no good. Tony Smith with the rebound, banks it up and in. So the Warriors are on the board, 4-2 Fordham. We have 17.58 to go in the first half. Right away, the ball is knocked out of bounds. It will be Fordham's ball in front of the Marquette bench. Bob Duquette a bit pacified tonight, sitting on the bench. Looks to be a little bit calm now, Jim. It's funny, now that I'm sitting up here at the uh, top of the press row, I can see that Bob Duquette is going bald, Joe. <laughs> we are way up tonight. We're in the blue seats. Here's Mark Taylor getting outside for Pedro. Right side, it's picked off, but regained by Parada. He lays it up and in. Unfortunate break for the Warriors right there as Pedro threw the ball away, but Parada got it off the deflection, laid it in his first two. It's 6-2 Fordham, 17-36 to go in the first half as Pop Sims being trapped in the backcourt. Gets it ahead for Anglebar. Right side, Tony Smith. Down low for Trevor Powell. Powell, triple team. Get it outside for Smith. Top of the key, Foley. Foley holds high. The Warriors have a lot of trouble getting it inside, Jim, just like against Dayton. They could not penetrate that three-point circle. All right, well, Fordham's playing his zone, and the Warriors have had trouble breaking his zone. Finally, they get it down low for Powell, and <laughs> Powell commits the turnover. The ball will go over to Fordham as the Warriors down by four. We have 17-14 to play in the first half, and right away, the Warriors will substitute Rod Gross into the lineup. He will replace Trevor Powell. Powell sits down. Rod Gross checking in, Jim. He had a season-high 11 points against the ball. Unbelievable, Joe, that game was. He was on fire in garbage time. <laughs> He's now averaging 1.9 a game. Jim, every time I look up, Gross, as average, keeps climbing. Although it couldn't go down. Now the pass thrown away by Parada will be Warriors ball. They trail by four. We have 17.05 to go in the first half. Mark Anglovar now having trouble getting it in against the Fordham Press. Finally gets it into Gross. And now, let's see what the Warriors try to do now with Fordham playing that zone. Now, will Rod Gross post up down low, Jim? Well, I think what Marquette's going to have to do is swing the ball around, get Anglevar and Foley into a good shooting rhythm and hit the three-point shots or, or, or a two-point shot. They're going to have to move the ball quickly. 22 on the shot clock. Pat Foley trapped in the corner by Parada. Cross-court pass for Anglevar. Fakes the jumper around. Pedro sends it down low for Smith. He banks it up and in. Tony Smith has four. The Warriors trail 6-4, to 16-32 to play in the first half. And Marquette. Staying close to Fordham early on, but will this pace remain? Here's Greg Pedro, left side for Danny O'Sullivan, coming out to the high post. Here's Parada. Parada pulls up over Foley. It's an air ball. O'Sullivan there to lay it in, and he's fouled. You know, Joe, that's four straight layups for Fordham, either on rebounds or, or easy cuts to the basket. And when you're going to shoot layups, you're, you know, that's a high percentage shot. You're going to have to play better defense. Foul goes against Rod Gross. That is his first, and you are absolutely right, Jim. And and attack it on, you get you fouling the guy. I mean, if you're going to foul him, knock him down on the ground, you know? Danny O'Sullivan will be at the line once again. He missed his only free throw attempt tonight. He's a 63% free throw shooter, and he missed again. But the rebound right to Fordham, and that is Tom Parada. He puts it up and in, and Jim... The other day you were telling me as Fordham jumps out to the 10-4 lead, it's almost beneficial that the opposing team hits their free throws because Marquette won't get the rebound, right. so you get two points instead of one, as they did right there. Right. That's five straight layups they've had. 15.57 to go along the baseline. Tony Smith gets the lay-in, and he has all six of Marquette's points. The Warriors trail 10-6 with 15.50 to go in the first half. Well, so Tony Smith getting off the snide early, Jim, with six quick points. It looks like Smith is going to take it down low, which is good. Here's an interception by Tony Smith, taking it out of the hands of O'Sullivan. Pop Sims, lead pass for Anglovar, lays it up and in. First two for Mark, it's 10-8, 
Fordham, 15.30 to go, and the Warriors still only trail by two this early, Jim. Well, Tony Smith is keeping Marquette in the game with good defense and also penetrating that zone for layups. Here's Pedro, fakes a three-pointer, drives down the lane, sends it underneath for Parada. He missed the layup. Rebound, Tony Smith. Smith at six foot four is dominating the inside game tonight. Here's Pat Foley starting his drive in the paint. Foley away, it's good. Pat Foley. Foley's first two, and he ties the game at 10. 15 minutes to go. The Warriors have fought back, scoring the last six points. Fordham now setting up patiently. Greg Taylor, right side for Paterno. Paterno guarded closely by Foley, sent it outside for Pedro. Starting down the lane is Greg Pedro, sends it outside for Mark Taylor, his three-pointer, no good. Right there for the rebound, Parada draws Gross in the air, and Rod Gross commits a second foul. Warriors 13 foul, Jim. Again, it's just uh, the fact of not boxing out. Uh, you know, you got to get rebounds. <clears throat> you can't let Fordham get down low for the easy shots. You're going to have to force him to shoot the outside jump shot. But then again, on the other hand, Marquette has shown good penetration. They've kicked the ball down low to Tony Smith and Foley, and, and uh, they're getting some easy shots themselves. Mark Parada to the line for two free throws. Parada has a season-high 22 points against Texas Christian as he buries the first. Jim, Fordham is a sort of a strange team. They have played a lot of the, the, the great teams in this country, such as North Carolina and St. John's, close. Matter of fact, taking both those schools to overtime. But then Holy Cross at Rose Hill, the Rams proceed to get blown out. Lost the game only by eight as Parada hits both free throws. But uh, it's a team that Marquette should be able to stay with. Particularly in a place like uh, the guard because it, it's really not a true home game for Fordham. The crowd is sparse. You know, there, there's a lot of Marquette people here, actually. And uh, it's not a uh, raucous crowd. Okay, on that note, we will take a timeout on the WMUR Basketball Network with the score of Fordham 12, Marquette 10. Okay, we're back on WMUR. Joe Metz along with Jim Coleman tonight from Madison Square Garden. The Fordham Rams on top of the Marquette Warriors 12 to 10 early. The Warriors looking for their first road win of the year, and Mark Anglevar set to inbound baseline in front of the press. Here's Pat Foley drawing Paterno in the air. Now Foley gets it cross court for Michael Sims, so the Warriors handling the press right there. Here's Sims along the baseline. Michael pulls it out, and he'll start it all over again with Mark Anglevar way outside. Here's Michael Sims, 28 on the shot clock. And look at this garden, Jim. It's just empty. Was it like this for any of your previous six games here this year? No, not really. Here's Tony Smith along the baseline. Missed the jumper. Rod Gross missed That's the follow. Miss. Gross puts it up. Missed, and it's tipped in by, I believe, Tony Smith. Smith's got eight, and the Warriors tie the game at 12 with 14.04 to go in the first half. And Rod Gross right there just missed three easy lay-ins as Tony Smith comes away with the steal. Saves it inbounds for Michael Sims, and now Rod Gross picks up the loose ball. Tony Smith across midcourt. Right side, Anglovar. Anglovar, get it outside, Pops. Pops, left side, Foley. His three-pointer is off the mark, and the rebound goes to Andre McClendon, who's in the game for Fordham. McClendon set it left side for Pedro along the baseline for O'Sullivan and the stuff. So Danny O'Sullivan looking tonight like Tito the Magician Horford, who we will see in the second game. O'Sullivan's got six, and Fordham leads at 14 to 12. And again, they're, they're moving the ball very quickly. Very quick ball movement by Fordham. They're getting the easy shots. Here's an alley-oop for Tony Smith. It's knocked away out of bounds, but that is the first alley-oop pass I've seen the Warriors throw all year right there. Well, they threw one down in Dayton to Smith with the jam. Remember that? That's true. Okay, the second one. But that was in the set offense, Jim, for right. Michael Sims way outside. So the Warriors get the ball back. It was knocked out of bounds by Fordham. Here's Foley, right side for Sims, 23 on the shot clock. Sims brings it outside. Marquette trails by two. We're at Madison Square Garden. The Warriors looking for their first road win. Here's Gross, triple team, bounces it out to Anglevar, and you weren't pleased with that action. Cross court, Michael Sims with seven on the clock. Get it outside, Anglovar. His three-pointer, and that one is good. Anglovar, second field goal. He's got five, and Marquette takes a 15-14 lead with 12.47 to go in the first half, Jim. Well, that's Marquette's first lead of the game. Here's Joe Paterno. Get it outside for McClendon. Right side for Taylor. Mark Taylor, cross court for Paterno. 
Here's the ball in Mark Taylor's hands along the baseline. Sent it outside for Turno. His 18-footer, it's no good, and Gross grabs a rare rebound. Here's Michael Sims across court for the Warriors. The Warriors trying to expand on a one-point lead. We have 12-20 to play in the first half. Michael Sims, left side for Pat Foley, baseline Tony Smith. Guarded by Paterno, outside for Foley. Here's Anglevar, right side for Sims, 25 on the shot clock. Sims holds high, guarded by Taylor. Get it outside for Foley. Here's Michael Sims, down low, Rod Gross. Gross backing in, looking no, for the turnaround. No, no. His fall away is oh. good. <laughs> Gross is first too, and he's already over his season's average. <laughs> 17-14 Marquette, 11.52 to go. And, Jim, that is the first one of those little turnarounds I've seen Gross hit all year. Yeah, unbelievable. Simply incredible ball player. Here's Taylor. Fakes out Sims. Get it outside for McClendon. McClendon starts his drive. Here's Taylor for three. It's no good. Foley grabs the rebound, and we have a loose ball foul called against Pat Foley. Well, I guess they caught him with the push-off on that. Uh, not really sure. We're going to have a timeout here, Joe. I thought Foley had position, but I guess not. He went over the back of Fred Herzog, who's into the Fordham lineup. So we have a timeout on the floor of Madison Square Garden, a timeout with the score mark at 17, Fordham 14. We will be back to Madison Square Garden in a moment following these words. Okay, we're back to the Madison Square Garden with 11.37 to play in the first half. The Marquette Warriors lead the Fordham Rams 17-14. to 14. And Jim... Yeah, what are you pointing at, Jim? Well, I'm just wondering if that's your parents here or not, Joe. Well, they'll be checking in at any moment. The second Ed Metz <laughs> comes in, the red carpet will come out. <laughs> so Fordham along the baseline to inbounds. They trail by three, and here's a steal by Michael Sims. Sims with McClendon to beat, lays it up and in. First two for Pops and the Warriors now have a five-point lead. 19-14, to 11-24 to go, Jim. Well, the Warriors have outscored him 7 to nothing, Joe, on a 7-0 run. And overall, they are on a 15-4 run. Here's McClendon. He pulls up from 16 in Kansas. First two for Andre McClendon, the sophomore from Highland Falls, New York. And Jim is pointing out the basketball, dribbling himself on the scoreboard here. Now, that was a big... A big favorite of yours at the previous doubleheader you had. Well, I've been to six garden games here. This is my seventh one this year, and frankly, I'm getting sick of that damn ball. 19-16, <laughs> Marquette. Here's Sims, right side, Foley. His 18-footer, no good. The rebound goes to Parada. Swings it outside for Taylor. Taylor crosses midcourt. Mark Taylor running the show for Fordham. Left side, McClendon. Fakes the three-pointer, looking down low. Right side for Fred Herzog. He gets it down low for Parada. It's knocked outside to O'Sullivan. And with 27 on the shot clock, here's Parada down the lane, hands off to Herzog, who lays it in. Fred Herzog, averaging six a game, gets his first layup. And it's 19-18, the Warriors lead cut to one. Fordham showing press. We have 10-12 to go in the first half. Well, it's a pretty high scoring game. At this rate, it's going to end up in the 80s, but uh, <clears throat> that's because both teams are getting good penetration. Fordham averages 70 points a game. And here's a steal by the Rams. They have a chance now to take the lead with 9.56 to go. Outside, Mark Taylor. He sets it up, calling the play. Marquette out now in that 2-3 zone. Left side for Herzog. Get it outside for Taylor. Right side, McClendon. His three-pointer is good. Andre McClendon has five, and the Rams now lead it 21-19. They're on a little run of their own, Jim. Right. They're on a 7-0 uh, run. Here's Sims beating McClendon, gets it into the hands of Anglovar, up ahead for Pat Foley. Foley guarded by Taylor, now hands to Michael Sims, and Sims sends it right side for Foley. 29 on the shot clock. Here's Anglovar. He'll take a three-pointer, and he'll miss it in and out. The rebound goes to Fred Herzog. Fordham looks to be running. In the front court, Taylor breezes by Foley, sends it down low. Parada, his little lay-in is good. 9-0 run, Joe. Let's count this now. Eight points for Tommy Parada. It's 23-19, Fordham. The Warriors need a hoop with nine minutes to go in the first half. Foley's trap gets it back to Sims. Here's Anglovar with the ball left side in the corner for Tony Smith. Outside Anglovar, swing at top of the key for Pops. Pops holds, bounce pass Anglovar. Looking for Smith along the baseline. He'll bring it outside. The Warriors having a little bit of trouble getting inside now against that zone. Sims now sends it in the corner for Anglovar. His three-pointer is good. 
Anglevar has got six points so far, Joe. Make that eight, Jim, on two three-pointers, and the Warriors pull to within right. one. 23-22, 8.39 to go. We have a substitution for Fordham. Greg Pedro back into the lineup. He replaces Kevin McBride. Kevin McBride, the 6'8 freshman from Flushing, sits down, no points in about two minutes. Danny O'Sullivan back in for the Rams as well, as is Mike Rice, a 6'3 freshman from Youngstown, Ohio. Rice picked up by Sims outside. Here's a steal by Tony Smith. Should be a slam, Joe. Get ready. Smith slams it home. 24-23 Marquette, 8.22 to go in the half. Smith has 10, and too bad we didn't have our WMUR microphone in that rim, Jim. Well, it would have been a monster slam, Mets. And Michael Sims now pressuring Mike Rice from behind is called for the foul. For Sims, that'll be his first. Jim, it's interesting to note the fact that Seton Hall has been dropping games left and right. That heartbreaker at the Meadowlands on Saturday to St. John's. They could be back in the postseason NIT as well. Well, you can bet your last dollar on that. But they'll be there. Fred Herzog to inbound. He gets it now in for Danny O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan being pressured by both Powell and Tony Smith. Trevor Powell back into the game for Rod Gross. Gross getting two points and three rebounds. And now... Holding is Herzog. He's trapped by Simpson. Smith finds down low. Parada, it's lost. Here's O'Sullivan for the lay-in. Eight points for Danny O'Sullivan, Jim. He only averages eight a game. Well, I think that uh, the reason is a lot of centers have good games against Marquette because they really don't have the dominating big bang. We saw that in uh, uh, Minnesota. And, and uh, the only exception was that Miami game. Here's Michael Sims. Dribbling to the left. Sims now pulls it out. 28 on the clock. Foley in three-point ranges. Moves to the left against Pedro. Oh, it's stolen by Parada. Pass. Parada with Sims to beat. Lays it up and in. Ten points for Tommy Parada. It's 27-24. Fordham, 7-18 to go in the half. Marquette once again beats the press with the passes. Mark Anglovar walks it up. Bounce pass ahead for Michael Sims. Anglevar, right side for Foley. The Warriors need a hoop here. Get it outside now into the hands of Michael Sims. Left side for Anglevar. Get it outside for Pops. Here's Pops, left side Anglevar. Three-pointer, it's good. And Anglevar now has three three-pointers, 11 points. He ties the game at 27 with 6.55 to go in the first half, Jim. And on that note, we have a timeout from the Gordon. A timeout with the score. The Marquette Warriors 27, the Fordham Rams 27. We'll be back to the Garden in a moment. Okay, we return to Madison Square Garden. Joe Metz along with Jim Coleman. The Warriors have a tie game on their hands, Jim. 27 all. And so right. far, this put, fits plan A of your two-fold idea, Jim. There, there, here comes your father, Joe. And he is arriving. Well, wave to him. And he didn't see us. We're so high up, nobody They're can see right us here. up here. Your parents are right in front of us. They have better seats than us. Yeah, well, at least we didn't pay for ours. <laughs> so the Warriors go with a lineup of Rod Gross, Trevor Powell, Tony Smith, Michael Sims, and Mark Anglovar. Sims has two, Anglovar 11, Smith with 10. So that's how the backcourt shapes up right now, although Tony Smith playing that power forward. Here's Parada outside. He sends it down low for O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan kicks it outside for Pedro. His three-pointer is good. Well, the ref went down on that, Mets. You've got to love that. Pedro's got five and gives Fordham a three-point lead, 30-27, to 6.33 to go in the first half. Marquette's Michael Sims controlling the tempo. Right side for Tony Smith. Outside Pops. Pops kicks it left side for Anglovar. Outside for Michael Sims. Here's Tony Smith. Top of the key, Sims. 25 on the clock. His kick jumper's good. Michael Sims, four points in the ball game. The Warriors pull it within one with 6.11 to go in the first half. And Jim, can you see this pace continuing with both teams hitting the majority of their perimeter shots? Well, they're both getting very good shots, very good ball movement by both teams, particularly right there as we see Fordham knock it down low. Well, O'Sullivan missed the layup. The rebound goes to Anglovar, and Sims walks it up for Marquette. A left side for Mark Anglovar. Baseline Rod Gross. Do it Gross up. takes no, it to the hoop. No. His fall away. Over the rim, no good. The rebound grabbed by Parada. Cleared out now for Greg Taylor. 
Taylor, lob pass, right side Paterno. The Warriors have shut down Paterno, zero points in this ballgame so far after a 31-point effort against Holy Cross. Here's Paterno outside for Taylor. Here's another three-pointer by Pedro. It's no good. The rebound is grabbed by Powell. He was fouled by Joe Paterno. For Paterno, that was his first foul. And more importantly, Jim, that is Fordham's first foul of the ball game. With 5.29 to go in the first half, Fordham has just committed their first foul of the game, Jim. What does that tell you? Well, the refs are hometowners. Uh, I don't know. I think that it's because the Warriors have really not gotten inside. They have been relying on those Anglovar long-range bombs. Right. 30-29, 5.20 to go in the first half. Rod Gross way out in three-point territory. He'd love to, but he dare not. Here's Michael Sims, left side. Sims has it picked off by Mark Taylor. Taylor beats Sims into the forecourt. Taylor spins, bounce pass Paterno. Joe Paterno down the lane, weaves towards the hoop, and he draws the foul. Now, on the other hand, the Warriors have committed six fouls, but that's really not that bad. They're not over the limit, which is rare for them. They're usually over the limit with, what, 10 minutes to go in the first half or 10 minutes to go in the second half, and, and, then, and then the other team lives off the line for the next 10 minutes. The foul was on Michael Sims. That was his second. The Warriors have now committed six, as Jim said, and Joe Paterno will go to the line for a pair. Actually, they're going to inbound on the baseline. That is because Paterno, they did not get the continuation on that one. Here's Pedro, baseline for O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan get it outside for Pedro, cross-court pass Paterno. The Warriors swinging with the defense. Paterno, or per Pedro, fires up the three-pointer. It's an air ball. O'Sullivan grabs the rebound and hooks it in. Danny O'Sullivan has 10 points, Jim. And Fordham leads by three, 32-29 with 4.40 to go in the first half. Danny O'Sullivan averaging eight and a half a game is lighting it up for 10 tonight. Here's Anglovar, swing it right side for Tony Smith. Smith, get it outside, Gross at the free throw line. Gross right side for Tony Smith, 24 on the shot clock. Anglovar outside in the corner for Michael Sims. Sims backing in against Taylor, get it outside, Anglovar fakes the three-pointer, spins around Pedro, left side Sims, and now with 13 on the clock, Michael's forced to bring it out. Here's Tony Smith, a down low for Powell, and underneath we have a foul called on Fordham. I believe it's going to go on Tommy Parada. And it will be on Parada. That's Parada's first, team second. Into the game for Marquette is Pat Foley. And sitting down is Rod Gross. And you know what Fordham could almost do is just keep fouling him for the last four minutes and then Marquette will still have to take it out. Right? I agree with that too and wait till the final two minutes of the half. 4.06 to go in the first half. Marquette trails by three. Joe Metz and Jim Colin from Madison Square Garden. Here's Michael Sims. Sims guarded by Taylor. Get it outside for Foley. Picked up by Paterno, 25 on the clock. Send it down low. Trevor Powell, turn around, gets the roll, and in. First two for Powell, and the Warriors cut the Fordham lead to one. 3.44 to go in the first half. Walking the ball up court for the Rams is Mark Taylor. Taylor met by Anglovar playing the point. Bounce pass, down low, Parada behind. It's back for O'Sullivan, lays it up and in. Well, back, Joe. Daniel Solomon is planting himself down low. He's getting either rebounds or passes and laps. That's the story of the Fordham uh, offense. Daniel O'Sullivan now has 12. Fordham leads by 3, 3.14 to go. Foley spins in the lane, get it outside. Anglevar fakes the three-pointer. Down low, Trevor Powell. Reverse layup is good, and he's fouled. <laughs> Trevor Powell. And that brings a cheer from Mr. Joseph Metz. Well, that cuts the Fordham lead oh, to one. The recipient of a uh, late, latest award out of uh, high school, right? That's right. Well, Jim, Trevor Powell will go to the line with a chance to tie right here. Powell on the year, 10 out of 20 from the free throw line. Matter of fact, the Warriors as a team shooting 66% from the free throw line. That is not good as Powell missed the free throw. And now Fordham can extend their lead with three minutes to go in the half. Paterno pulls up from 18. He missed it. The rebound knocked out of bounds by Anglobar. It will be Fordham ball underneath their own hoop. And we're going to have another timeout from Madison Square Garden. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Fordham Rams, 34, the Marquette Warriors, 33. We will be back to the Garden in a moment on WMUR.
We return to Madison Square Garden where the Marquette Warriors trying to continue their streak alive. They have won all eight meetings with the Fordham Rams, Jim, including a whitewashing last year at the Mecca, 96-67. The Warriors running up 16 points in the final two minutes of that game. Uh, but they've never lost to Fordham, Jim. Do you think the streaks, the way it looks now, think that that has a good chance of continuing? Oh, sure. I mean, Fordham's playing good basketball. They're, they're kicking it down low. They're getting easy shots. Uh, Marquette's playing well on offense, though, too. They're hitting their shots. As here we have an inbounds pass to Fred Herzog on the ground. We have a battle for it. And I believe they said Mark Aguilar was touching the ball with his foot out of bounds, so it will go over to Fordham. We have 2.56 to play in the first half. Marquette trailing by one. Join us again this Wednesday night from the Mecca. Loyola's in town with superstar Gerald Haywood. Actually, you can uh, join us right after this game for Joey O'Connor and the Miami Maris game. I can't wait to get some cheap shots in it. Joey O. Here's an interception by Trevor Powell on the inbounds pass. And the Warriors can take the lead. Right there, we see a foul committed by Andre McClendon as he leveled Pop Sims at midcourt off the outlet pass. Good defense there uh, by Trevor Powell. Picking that pass off and then the uh, foul committed by Fordham. Now, if you're Fordham, like we said before, Fordham was only committed now four team fouls. They can play with two more in the final 246 of this half. They may want to use them wisely. Sure. Here's Mark Anglevar, left side for Tony Smith. Get an outside Anglevar, and now the Warriors have a chance to take the lead. Foley, right side for Sims. Get an outside Powell. Powell tonight, a big game, four points early. Here's Pat Foley along the baseline, blocked away by Paterno, and the foul committed by a Joe Paterno. That is Paterno's. Second foul, Fordham now with five, and Pat Foley, a 78% free throw shooter, goes to the line for the pair. And Joe, still no sign of uh, Mr. Ed Metz. Uh, something must have held him up. 60 degree weather today, maybe he, he had better things to do, Jim. Traffic on the Van Wick, perhaps, or? He had any number of things, Jim. As Pat Foley goes to the line, we know all know Ed watching Marquette basketball is like holding a, a cross to Satan's face, Jim. As Pat Foley missed the first, he'll get another one. Well, you sure you want to make an analogy like that? I mean, uh, I, I don't think Satan has anything to do with Marquette basketball. <laughs> Foley's second is good. He's got three in the game. The Warriors tied at 34. 2.30 to go. Marquette showing press. Fordham beats that easy. Here's a two-on-one. Parada down the lane. Banks it up and in. Tommy Parada's got 12, and the Fordham Rams lead by two with 2.19 to go. See the way Parada took it right to the market defense there. Here's Tony Smith, left side, picked up by Parada. Slides it down low, it's picked off by Parada. Outlet pass for McClendon. McClendon running two on two. Spit pass to O'Sullivan, he slams it home. Andre McClendon dropped it behind his back for O'Sullivan. He slammed it through. He's got 14, and the Rams now lead by four with under two minutes to go in the first half. Tony Smith moves to the right. Here's Michael Sims. His pull-up from 17 is good. Well, that was a streak stopper. They needed to do that. And Joe, is he leaving? I don't know. Six points for Sims. It's 38-36, a minute 33 to go. Well, where's he off to? I don't know, Jim. Food? There's Fred Herzog down the lane, lays it in. Herzog's got four. And Fordham leads it 40-36, to 36, a minute 17 to go in the first half. Very poor defensive performance by the Warriors here in the first half, Joe. Here's Mark Anglovar. Get it to Michael Sims. A minute five to go, 24 on the shot clock. Get it outside for Pat Foley, left side Anglovar. Here's Tony Smith having trouble along the baseline. Get it outside Anglovar. Here's Michael Sims. Sims moves to the right. Outside for Foley. He should take that three-pointer. Instead decides to drive, picks up the foul. The foul is on Andre McClennan. That's his second. Fordham now with six, so the Warriors won't shoot. They'll get a new 45. There's 50 seconds to go in the first half. So basically Marquette can use just about the rest of the time left in the first half as Fordham's going to send in Greg Pedro for the final 50 seconds. Pedro is going to replace Andre McClendon. McClendon sits down with five points. So Marquette will inbound underneath their own hoop. And Jim, the Warriors have had a lot of trouble running down the time at the end of the half looking for that good shot. 
Well, they did a very good job in Dayton on the last uh, play of the first half with Trevor Powell getting the slam. We'll see what happens here, Joe. Here's Sims outside for Foley. Three-pointer. It's good. Pat Foley has got six. The Warriors cut the Fordham lead to one. It's 40-39 with 36 seconds to go. Fordham can use it all. And I think they're going to. <laughs> so the Rams going with the backcourt of Mark Taylor and Fred Herzog along with Greg Pedro in there at the moment. Here's Taylor outside and now Fordham using their version of the four corners. We have 17 seconds to play in the first half. Holding outside is Mark Taylor. Taylor right side for Herzog. Get it outside for Parada. Smith almost comes up with the steal. Seven seconds to go. Down low, Sullivan, he walked, but he lays it in. And now with two seconds, Marquette has a chance. They trail by three. Sims from 40, no good. So the half comes to an end with the score, Fordham 42, Marquette 39. Danny O'Sullivan has 16 points. Danny O'Sullivan has a season high of 18. That is his career high as well, but against Marquette, he has burned the Warriors for 16 points in the first half. Marquette trails Fordham 42 to 39 from the Madison Square Garden on the Warriors Basketball Network. And Jim, Danny O'Sullivan has everything he could want down low in this first half. And uh, that's kind of surprising. The uh, Warriors usually play good defense, but they're playing uh, the man-on-man. -man. And, you know, when you look at someone like uh, Danny O, shall we call him from now on, uh, he's uh, a 6'10 player from Bayonne. The thing of it is, Marquette really doesn't have the manpower to match that. And uh, he's a big kid, and, uh, and the fact is he's just cleaning house down the lane. 215-pound O'Sullivan has basically, I don't even think he's missed from the field. He has just gotten everything he can want down low. Most of his points coming right near the hoop. But the Warriors, on the other hand, offensively have done a complimentary job, Jim. Tony Smith getting going early, picking up some inside baskets. Ten points for Smith in the first half. Mark Anglovar bringing Marquette back into the ball game with three three-pointers. He's got 11. So Marquette... While they're getting burned on defense, and that's the thing you don't like in the, from the first half, at least they are keeping pace with the Rams, but right. Marquette's style of basketball does not permit them to score that many points. Exactly, although we've seen it against Loyola Mary. Well, now. that was an exception with uh, Paul Westhead's, well, that, maybe there's an analogy, Paul Westhead's son is on the Fordham Rams. He will not play, as he is about the 15th man. He may play, but it, only in garbage time. Right. But, uh, Good that, analogy, though, if you think about it. <laughs> the Westheads like to run. Westhead on the year has three points in three games. Well, you know, Fordham, uh, they did they did rack up 87 points the other night, which uh, is by no means a defensive game. You know, uh, Holy Cross almost hit the 100 level. So uh, Fordham definitely likes to get out and run the ball. Tommy Parada has 12 in the first half. Parada averaging about 15 a game, but... What the Warriors have done, they have shut down Joe Paterno, the MAC player of the week. Paterno tonight has failed to score, Jim, after registering a 31-point effort against Holy Cross on Saturday and then a 14-for-15 effort from the field against Army last Friday. So the Warriors have limited Paterno to zero points. As a matter of fact, last year against Marquette, I believe Paterno was held to, as I look this up, well, he was held to under 10 points last year at the Mecca. So the Warriors really have closed down Fordham's leading scorer, Paterno, but now Sullivan is stepping to the forefront. That's a good point, Mets. Thank you. Now, I want to know what uh, uh, what this three-point concept is here. Well, it's simply the family that hits the most three-pointers wins the contest. And I think this is uh, kind of scandalous, considering that the family that hits the most three-pointers, what do they do? Make the mom shoot 25. I guess. Here and the kids go. shoot about two as these guys are firing up bricks. So there we have it, the first half story from Madison Square Garden. We have three more halves of basketball to play tonight. But in our game, the Marquette Warriors trail the Fordham Rams 42-39 at halftime. 
We will be back with the halftime stats and everything after these words.